climate show. Well, in all the talk and policies around climate change, we hear a lot about getting to net zero. The word net here reveals that we won't end all activities that pump out greenhouse gases. Some will continue so long as their emissions are balanced by cuts or absorption elsewhere. This is known as carbon offsetting. Some believe it's critical to saving the planet. For others, it is a dangerous dodge. Well, digging further required me to do this. But first, how do you actually offset? So many things around us emit carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases, even our breath for a start. And these, and this, and this, and this. Offsetting is paying to create more ways to reduce or remove those gases with these, and this, and that, and even this stuff. So that was carbon offsetting in theory. Let's go and see it in action. The Isle of Mull in the Hebrides just off the west coast of Scotland. The island has a timeless beauty, washed by the natural rhythms of weather and the seasons. But not always. One weekend in the autumn, the Mull Rally roars into town. The rally is the longest, toughest and most popular closed road race in Britain. Around 150 cars compete day and night on sinuous strips of tarmac at speeds well above 100 miles an hour. This year is its 50th. Drivers and fans come from across the country, yet it is frequently won by locals. What do you think the rally brings to the island? <laughs> uh, lots of money, a nice buzz, a great atmosphere. Last bit of fun before the winter sets in. They reckon it brings over a million pound in. It is a thrilling sport, an indulgence, a pastime based around the internal combustion engine. Carbon dioxide is being emitted for fun. So, I thought I'd have a go. Press the launch button. Here we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God, this is extraordinary. <laughs> oh, well. I'm allowed in the co-driver's seat for what is known appropriately as the shakedown stage. Dress rehearsal under rally conditions before the race proper. Are you ready for that? Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> John tells me during racing they use about a litre of fuel every mile. <laughs> That's a lot of petrol being used in this game. Whee! Oh, hello, Hedge. But this year, there is a difference. They are offsetting. What we do, Tom, is we work out the average fuel consumption that's expected to be used by a rally car in litres, and we use conversion figures to translate that into carbon equivalent, um, and we offset based on that for the competition, either for the competitors competing or spectators or the teams, whatever way we want to do it. They're offsetting around half the emissions from the competitors and the spectators, calculated at 46 tonnes of carbon dioxide. That's similar to the climate change impact of driving an average car for 27 years. I suppose the question in the end, some people would say that, yes, you're giving this a licence to continue. Maybe for the climate, it would be better if it stopped. Yes, and we could say that about lots of human activity and lots of sports, you know. As I say, the perception of motorsport, because they're noisy cars, they are consuming fuel. But, you know, if you think about the carbon footprint of golf, of football, we're all creating a carbon footprint, and it's good that we're taking responsibility. I can safely say that was the most exciting and somewhat scary thing I've ever done in my life. Quite extraordinary. Honestly, the adrenaline taps just straight on. Oof. And now we're going to go again. <laughs> The rally's carbon sponge will be a forest on the mainland. Trees absorb carbon dioxide as they grow. It's one of the main ingredients in wood. 
Well, we're in the middle of a, a vast planting area. We, be careful not to step oh. on the new trees. <laughs> yeah, they're quite small got... at the moment. So more forest means more carbon captured. And this year's Mull Rally paid Highland carbon for a little under an acre to be planted and cared for. It would be spectacular. This will all be native broadleaf along the lower side of the bank, uh, starting from willow and alder and working its way up through aspen and oak and so on, up, and, up to conifers up on, on the upper reaches. How much scrutiny and certification is there on these projects to make sure they're actually going to lock up the carbon that they promise? Very high level of scrutiny. So all of these projects are third party uh, inspected. There's an inspection after the project is completed, which has already happened. There's then uh, an inspection after the first five years, and then every 10 years after that. It's not just verifying the trees are there, it's that there's enough carbon stored within those trees on the site. Some drivers believe the whole sport's long-term survival rests on making this change. If you look at Formula One, you look at the World Rally Championship, World Rally Cross Championship, all those are adapting new technology, whether it's all electric, whether it's hybrid. And I think people are realising at the grassroots, at the national level of the sport, that if we don't change, there's not going to be a future of the sport for ourselves in five, ten years and for the next generation. Motorsport is part of the entertainment industry. Can offsetting and technical fixes stop it becoming a relic of history?